Hey folks, it's been a while since I've made a video, um, mainly because I'm not really sure what I wanted to make a video about. Uh, I kind of felt like I had covered everything there was to cover in the super simple, aka now known as the inmate brewing method, um, and I didn't want to keep beating a dead horse over and over again. Um, most of the folks on YouTube seem to have grasped that concept and it's got them introduced into brewing. So I wasn't quite sure where to go with it. Um, so I think I figured out something that I've been studying that I want to share with you guys that will um, take things sort of to the next level, both in, in brewing and in, hopefully you guys are going to get into this, uh, I'm going to bridge the gap between brewing and herbalism or uh, herbal medicine, which is in another area that I, I study pretty intently. Um, so, well, first and foremost, you guys will notice there's the new and improved aerodynamic version of James. There's a, a story behind that. Um, quickly, I wanted a change, so that's certainly a radical change. Um, was tired of being hot all the time because of the 75 pounds of hair I was carrying around. Um, and there was a charity I'd read about years ago called Locks of Love that I really wanted to try to contribute to because it's, it's a wonderful charity. Um, we didn't take the appropriate measures to keep all the hair in one place when we cut my hair, unfortunately, so we couldn't make that donation. But now that it's actually shaved, I really like it a lot better. So the, the aerodynamic version of James is probably here to stay. stay so, um, Okay. Where do I start? I've got some notes here on the screen. Um, herbalism. Um, herbalism is the study of plants and natural medicines as an all. Uh, well, it was it's not really an alternative. I was about to say it's an alternative to pharmaceuticals, but it was the original pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceuticals were developed from traditional herbal knowledge and then further refined and purified and made stronger via studies in chemistry and all that fun stuff. Well, I'm a firm believer that while Western medicine is outstanding at treating acute symptoms, especially in emergency care, um, we have removed ourselves so far from nature and natural healing that um, we're starting to suffer for it. Uh, you know, a pill you get uh, today to cover, well, my own example, um, I have a mildly elevated blood pressure for obvious reasons. Um, so I, I've always just sort of managed it on my own, never really thought about it. Um, switched to a new doctor. She taught me into taking a little pink pill every day. It lowered my blood pressure. Um, I felt a little bit better. And, um, I was not very happy with that, uh, just because I don't like being dependent on, on pharmaceuticals. After a while, the side effect of that little pink pill started to rear its head, and I started getting a smoker's hack, and uh, I occasionally smoke cigars and pipes and all that fun stuff, but not to the point where it really does a whole lot of damage to my lungs, and I certainly don't have smoker's hack. So I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Did some research, and lo and behold, this new um, uh, drug that I was taking every day was causing, it's one of the side effects of smoker's hack. So I talked to the doctor and said, hey, look, I'm not really digging this. Can you switch me to something else? Uh, well, actually, I, I had run out <laughs> um, of my prescription for that, and... Um, I frankly didn't want to go to the doctor again because I'm not a big fan of going to the doctor. So I switched, uh, did some research, and I switched over to taking Hawthorne, uh, which is uh, actually, I've got the bottle right here. Hawthorne from mountainroseherbs.com. I love, love this herbal supplier. If you can't grow your own or get it naturally, these guys are the way to go. Um, they... Um, Try to get organic, pesticide-free is their that's their top priority, and their secondary priority is to try to make sure the herbs that they get are um, 
responsibly harvested um, so that they're, they're sustainable. Um, so I'm a big, big, big fan of those guys. And I'll, I'll put a link to them. I actually have an affiliate deal with these guys, too, because I believe in their product so much. I went ahead and, and got into bed business with them. Um, so you'll see on some of my websites, uh, I have links to these guys. So, and But their, their products are what are really astounding. And this is in pill form. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's just Hawthorne, the active components of Hawthorne, ground up and powdered and put into a, uh, uh, I think these are vegetarian friendly um, gelatin capsules. And I take two a day. And they work so well when I went back to the doctor finally to get my refill for my blood pressure medication. I had been off of it for three months. And because I had been taking these, she thought I was still on the blood pressure medication because it was still so well controlled. So anyway, to continue the story, she um, put me on another drug to try to get away from the smoker's hack. And... I'm really getting off topic here. She put me on another drug to try to get me uh, off of the smoker's hack so I didn't have that as a side effect. Well, the new drug, Diovan, completely messed me up. I completely, I was losing my grip on reality is the only way to describe it. I could see time. It was, I had a very adverse reaction to it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I stopped taking that and put myself back on Hawthorne and now my blood pressure's under control again, et cetera. So that's just one example of how to do this. By the way, there are no side effects that I'm aware of with Hawthorne. I've done an extensive amount of research on it. Um, Hawthorne is used extensively over in Europe to control blood pressure, um, usually under the guidance of uh, an herbal professional, but I'm not aware of any that I would trust in Houston. I haven't done the research to find one, honestly. So. Anyway, um, so that's what herbalism is, and um, I actually have a couple of books. I have one, the other one I couldn't find, I'm going to show you guys, that I highly recommend. You can get this on Amazon. It's The New Age Herbalist. I bought about three copies of this book. Um, it is, I bought three copies because I was loaning it out to friends, and it's so good I never got it back. So this is now in my no loan library. It's got high quality, let's see if I can find a couple of pages here. It has drawings of all of the herbs, along with their uh, parts used, main uses, uh, active ingredients chemically if they're known. It's, it's a bridge between traditional herbal folkloric medicine and medicinal medicine. And then it's got a series of full color pages with herbs in their various forms, either natural or dried. It's got indexes in the back of, uh, here's another full color page of what this stuff looks like. It's got indexes in the back where you can look up um, the condition that you're looking to treat and the herbs associated with them. Um, so you can look it up either way. Uh, obviously, you can get this stuff off the internet, but I found it very, very handy to have a book. So this is what I use as my general first layer reference for um, uh, to find out if I have a condition or know somebody who has a condition um, and want to recommend something they can look into and do their own research on. This is the first place I go. Um, if it's not in here, I'll go look on the internet. Um, there's another book that I can't find. I think I loaned out it. It never made its way back to me that definitely bridges the gap here. It's on, And I'll throw a picture of it uh, up on the video. It's uh, Sacred Herbal Healing Beers. And it talks about at length the medicinal uses, well, herbs and their medicinal properties, and ties them directly to home brewing and brewing and alcohol. So you can get your medicine essentially through your beer or through your through meat or wine or whatever. Um, and that's going to be the subject of the video today. Now that we're actually like 20 minutes into it or whatever. To the point. So you've seen the two books. Highly, highly, highly recommend those books. Um, get them on Amazon. 
is where I would get them. Um, and they're both relatively cheap. I think they're in the $20 range or something. The, the herbal book may be more than that. Um, so to get you guys started down this path, I'm going to show you a Herbalism 101 trick. And you can use this. If you don't want to use this medicinally, you can use it simply to extract the flavors you want from herbs. Say, for instance, if you wanted to make a... I don't know why you would be suicidal to, enough to do this, but if you wanted to make a habanero beer, um, don't send me a bottle of that if you're going to do it, but um, if you're going to make one, you would get a bunch of habaneros, and you would use this technique to extract the flavors and, the, and all that fun stuff from the herb. Or if you wanted to make a rosemary beer or anything along those lines, you would use this technique. So the basics of the technique are this. You need a jar, and this is just, a, I think it was an, uh, an olive jar at one point that's left over. I've already washed it out, sanitized it, and it's ready for use. I'm going to adjust the camera here in a minute. I'm just showing you the elements. Um, you will need your, so grab it, your herbs in question. This is just a stack of herbs from my herbal drawer. And I've got just stuff that would be applicable to brewing here. I'll go through the list. I have lavender, jasmine, dandelion uh, is used as a tonic and uh, clear out the bloodstream and purification organs like uh, kidneys and liver and all that fun stuff. Uh, it's more of a medicinal than a flavor. Absolutely. Um, uh, nettle is another one that's commonly used for uh, for chronic uh, medical conditions. Peppermint, uh, it certainly has its medicinal values, but most of you guys would use peppermint. I promise that's not peppermint, that's or that's peppermint, that's not anything else that it looks like. Um, uh, you would use this, probably most of you guys would just want it for the flavor. Um, kava kava is a stimulant that's used widely. Um, and then, of course, most of you guys are familiar with, I would imagine, star anise that's ex used extensively in brewing and juniper, gin and juice, uh, juniper berries. Uh, you got to be careful with juniper berries. Uh, they can actually hurt you. Gin in itself can hurt you because it's made with juniper berries. Um, I think it has a detrimental effect on your kidneys. So, uh, yeah, you always have to use care when you're you're doing this stuff. But the herbs we're going to use today in our demonstration are, let me find them, this is only about a quarter of the stuff I have in my herbal drawer. We are going to use, and herbs go flying everywhere, we're going to use uh, valerian, which is a, uh, it's a sedative and sleep aid. So we're going to use equal parts valerian, um, uh, the main objective here, I guess I should probably go over, is I want to make a nighttime beer that uh, will help you sleep. Alcohol in it, in and of itself is a sedative. Um, but I'm looking for a nighttime beer that will help me sleep because I have a bit of insomnia at times um, and calm me down in general, which is the valerian component. Um, and I'm adding two supporting herbs uh, to this that are just general maintenance herbs. This one is rose hips. And it's uh, a part of the actual rose, the flower. Um, and they're extremely high in vitamin C. Uh, they also have, I have notes here on the screen, uh, E and K and beta carotene. And are um, uh, useful, and obviously because they're high in vitamin C, in preventing um, things like colds and flu and all that stuff. Because it keeps vitamin C in your system. Um, as a side note, it's also uh, mild laxative and uh, diuretic, which is... Hey, it's never a bad thing, right? Um, and then St. John's Wort, um, which my mom was on for years, and I'm a firm believer in, um, because I've seen the effects of it firsthand. It's uh, it's hard to pin down, but it generally has uh, an effect, once it builds up into your system for about 30 days, of uh, a general promotion of well-being and emotional balance is the only way I can think of it. She... Um, had a uh, uh, 
guess what would you call it? She would go through mood swings um, when I, I think it was around her uh, when she started hitting the, the menopause phase, and she got on St. John's Wort and. She swears by it religiously. It really made a difference in her. So I'm looking for a sleepy bedtime, nighttime kind of beer uh, that I'll probably have one, maybe two before bedtime, that sort of thing. So I'm going for Valerian is the primary uh, effect I'm looking for. Um, and then as a support, St. John's wort and rose hips because I'm going to be taking this stuff anyway. So... Um, I might as well get some additional benefit out of it if I can. I'm a big fan of, um, if you're going to use herbs, I tend to use them in threes. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into that. But, yeah, so that's what we're going to make a tincture for. I would, because I have to take it anyway, I am going to eventually make a tincture of, uh, or a brew using hawthorn, um, probably hawthorn, garlic, and um what is that, that mushroom? Shiitake mushrooms, uh, which are all um, focused on the cardiovascular system. Uh, but I have such a supply of these now because I ordered them in bulk. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll do that at a later show. Um, so, yeah. And I can order all that stuff through Mountain Rose Herbs if I want. So, on to the tincture. I'm going to adjust the camera here. Hopefully it's going to work. There we go. All right. So the general principle here, or the concept is, you have your sealed jar. I'm going to open it, and I'm going to put in. Oh wait, I forgot to do something. Rose hips. You see how these are? Are uh, well, the rose hips. They're they're solid little clumps. I actually want to break these up so that we can expose more of the surface area and get access to more of the, uh, the essential oils and the, the water-soluble goodness uh, in these. So I'm going to break them up using a coffee grinder. Uh, I keep this around specifically for herbs. So I'm not going to get too deeply into dosage here uh, because I could go all day on that, but I'm simply going to use equal parts of the three and make the tincture and we can worry about dosage later. So I'm going to take, I have essentially, I don't know, I think that's about a cup, I'm going to use them all, of uh, rose hips. And you do for, if you're doing this for medicinal purposes, not for flavor, um, you definitely want to get the fresher herbs uh, if you can because they do lose some of their, their potency over time. But if you're just doing it for flavor, uh, you want the fresher stuff, but this is all dried, so I'm honestly not too concerned about it, especially since this is just to, to demonstrate to you guys. So I'm going to grind this up. It's going to be loud. It's all ground now, most of it anyway, there's still a couple of holes in there, but I'm not going to get too paranoid about it. So that's all ground up. So we're going to put this into our jar and make a mess apparently. By the way, if you're using herbs like this, don't grind them ahead of time. You always want to grind right before you use them. Because some of these, the compounds, the active ingredients in the herbs um, are volatile and they will degrade immensely uh, once they're ground. So, and that goes for cooking and for this stuff. So, I've essentially filled it up halfway or a third of the way with rose hips and I've got my leftovers here. Um, if, I'll probably make a tea out of that later or something uh, just so I don't waste it. So, then I'm going to put, there's no logic to the order here. Then I'm going to put about a third of the, the jar I'm going to put with valerian. Let's 
good. So now you can see where we're at. And then I'm going to put in some of the St. John's work. And because these are just supportive elements, I'm not too terribly concerned about uh, making sure there's an, there's an equal distribution. Valerian is really what I'm after for the, the effect I'm going for here. If I were to make a, if I were going for a different intent here, um, say not a nighttime beer, but you know, to help me control the blood pressure issue, I would have gotten the non-capsule form of Hawthorne. And, uh, man, I hate that glare on the camera. The non-capsule form of Hawthorne, just the powder, uh, which you can get, I think it's a pound of, um, oh, no, that's stevia. Never mind. Disregard. You can get this through Mountain Reserve, so in, in powder form, not just in capsules. Um, so we've got our setup there in the jar. Now I'm going to take vodka. The reason you want to use vodka, it does not have to be Sky Vodka. Um, taste is really pretty much irrelevant here. Uh, this is just happened to, happen to be what we have around the house. Um, got rock or got rock. Um, gut rock vodka is fine for this. The reason you want to use vodka over um, Everclear or something that's pure alcohol is because you um, vodka has both water and alcohol in it. So the water uh, will extract the water-soluble compounds in the herbs, and the alcohol will extract the alcohol-soluble compounds. And those will be both the medicinal compounds and the, um, and the flavor elements. So if this were a big jar of habaneros, well, I would probably be crying right about now because I'd be in pain if that many habaneros in a jar that close to me. But um, uh, if it were, you know, peppers or anything like that, or herbs, you know, time that I wanted to uh, impart that flavor to a beer or a brew, or even mead for that matter. Um, yeah, so you'd want to put them in a jar, and then we're simply going to cover the jar, or to cover the, the jar. We're going to cover the herbs slowly. Give a little bit of room. Going to let that bubble down and percolate. There we go. Going to leave a little bit of room to shake. Not much. Because you don't want a whole lot of air in here. Air means an opportunity for contamination. And we don't want that. So, okay. Vodka's going away. I'm going to take my lid. Put it back on and tighten it and I'm going to roll the herbs around and shake. I want to get a pretty good distribution of herbs. Now if you wanted to you could um, absolutely and positively do individual tinctures and that's usually the way it's done here. Um, you would do an individual tincture of the rose hips the valerian and the uh, St. John's wort and then combine those tinctures if you wanted to. Um, but because this is all going in the same brew, I'm just going to um, make the tincture with all three of it at the same time. So I'm just rolling this around in the jar to try to get it mixed up. I want to get everything in that jar wet and saturated with the alcohol in the water so that the alcohol in the water can draw out those active compounds in the herbs. And again, this would be the same if you were just extracting for flavor. Now, the speaking of flavor, this compound is going to be, um, I'm going to guess, I've never made this exact mix before, but I'm going to guess it's going to be extremely bitter. So that will mean if we're making beer, we'll have to account for that flavor and probably cut back on our hops in the, um, in the brew. So, all right, so what we do from here, what you want to do with this is um, I would put it in a dark place like a cabinet 
and make yourself a note to go shake it every day because you want to agitate that just like that you want to shake it for just a, a few seconds every day a minute would be better but again this is not an exact science um, you want to shake it about once a day you won't break if you forget to shake it or anything um, that's just going to further agitate and make sure the alcohol and the water continues to be in contact with all the herbs and nothing settles um, for too terribly long then after 30 days the tincture will be ready to use medicinally um, either you could drop the tincture uh, well what we'll do is we'll filter out the solid matter in the jar um, using a, a sieve or a colander or something and just have the, the liquid extract and then I will probably move the liquid extract over to a jar such as this they actually sell these on uh, um, uh, on mountain reserves but you know any jar uh, will work. You want a jar preferably that has a color, uh, either the blue, the cobalt, or a dark amber, uh, because you don't want light to get in and destroy any of the active compounds, um, which is why you put your jar in a dark place, uh, which is where I'm going to move here, move it here in a minute. And then this tincture will keep for, oh man, um, you could probably easily keep it for a year. Um, before it loses any potency and it'll it's a super concentrated version you're essentially concentrating and liquefying the flavor and the um, uh, medicinal elements in your herbs and you're making it just into uh, uh, a liquid form that's concentrated and easier to use and deal with um, then you can use it for your brews or your um, uh, or teas if you didn't want to make a brew or something along those lines so uh, you can get these from Mountain Reserves too uh, they're really really cheap I think it was like 50 cents a pop or something like that and they come in a, a variation of sizes um, I will probably end up out of this I'll probably end up filling up one or two of these jars and then when that's done you'll see um, we'll actually make a beer with this because it's going to be um, Bitter, it's probably going to be a, I'll probably make a wheat beer, but it'll be, I'll heavily spice it with something else just for flavor to try to cover up the, the bitterness of that flavor, but it'll still have the same medicinal value. So, um, I'm going to go put this up and um, here in 30 days, I may not get around to making a video right then, but uh, you'll see this coming in an upcoming video. So, let me adjust the camera here. Okay, other stuff I was going to talk about. Um, upcoming videos. I have right here in my piggy little hands um, the supplies. I'm waiting for Josh to get back in town. He's in out of town in Dallas visiting uh, his brother. Uh, we're waiting for him to get back and we're going to shoot another video. This will be a I got this from Brewers Guild, our local supplier. Um, uh, the big white bucket is four pounds of wheat extract. And then these are the Hallertal, Hallertal, H A L L E R T A U. I, somebody please correct me on how to pronounce this. Um, hops. It's imported German hops. They're low acid and very, very aromatic. I love these for wheat beers, uh, which are more delicate. Um, I have two packages. I believe they are the alpha on this, if anybody's concerned, which is the acid level for hops, is 3.2%. Uh, um, to me, it looks like a half ounce, but I'm not completely sure it's not written on the, the label. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to show you guys how to use, uh, to date, we've only done dry hopping. We're going to actually boil these uh, um, to extract the bitter compounds in the flavor or in the hops. And for one package, we're going to boil. And then for the other package, um, this, we're actually going to do the dry hop method so that we get um, the aromatic and the flavor of the the more delicate flower flavors out of the hops. So we boil one to get the, the bitters and we um, dry hop or you don't have to dry hop but I prefer to dry hop 
thus far in my experience, you get better aromas and flavors for dry hopping for aroma. Um, some folks even use two different hops or three different hops in a batch, depending on what they want. Um, so they may, if they want um, a different bitter, they may use a different hop for boiling and then come around and use for their, their second hit of hops if they decide to boil for that. Um, or dry hop, they'll use a completely different hop. And then on top of that, I pick this up, which is completely experimental. It's um, peach flavor extract, and it says it makes five gallons. Um, it is, to smell it, it smells, uh, I wish YouTube was smell vision because it's completely awesome. Um, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells really, really, really wonderful. Um, the taste, it definitely has a super concentrated peach flavor. The reason I'm going for this over actually using peaches is one, convenience, and two, I've actually tried to do a lot of brewing with peaches, and in my experience, it's been exceptionally difficult. It seems that you have to get just the right level of sweet um, to get the peach flavor to really, really come through if you're using natural peaches. Um, the flavor of peaches seems to be very, very closely tied to that sweet. And if you don't have the right amount of sweet for your, uh, for the flavor you're going for, it tastes horrible. So I'm hoping to bypass that problem with the, um, uh, the peach, uh, artificial peach flavor. Um, the blueberry stuff we made. I had a bottling video. I shot the bottling video. The problem is, when we went to do the very, very end of the video, we took a break. And when we went through the very, very end of the video where we actually bottled it, we did all the prep work and all that stuff and filmed it, the camera didn't turn on for the very last segment of the video. So um, I'm probably, there's no sense in airing the bottling video if you can't actually see the bottling. So my plan is to film the bottling with this batch sitting in front of me that we're going to make. So there'll be two videos for this batch. There'll be the, the making video and uh, the making thereof. And then there'll be the bottling video. So I'm hoping to get that up into next week, maybe somewhere in that, those lines. Okay. I promise I'm almost done. Last couple of things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, look at my notes here. Upcoming video, yeah, talked about that. Oh, sponsor links. I, now that we're done with the super simple stuff, and I, I will, trust me, I will continue to answer questions on that all day. Go to my website. There's a discussion forum on there. Uh, my website is, it's on the video, it's uh, super simple brewing. Uh, I'll answer questions for that until the end of time because I really want to see you guys get into home brewing and Hopefully, eventually, some of you guys are going to dig the medicinal aspects of this stuff. Even if you don't get into it from the medicinal aspects, you're going to learn how to extract really potent flavors from uh, from plants to expand your brewing repertoire. Um, I forgot to mention this. I just realized it. For those of you who are brewing in Saudi Arabia, overseas, all that stuff, or all that fun stuff, where Brewing is, <clears throat> well, alcohol is illegal. I have a, U.S. folks don't know this, but I have a very, very large following of those kind of folks who want to get access to alcohol for, I'm assuming for recreational purposes, um, but the country they live in does not allow that. Um, using this method to, especially to extract flavors from bitter, uh, uh, from bitter plants, you can supplement the bitters in this for this. If you can't get access to this, you can do this to be able to get access to your bitter flavors and your bitter compounds. So, um, yeah. If you don't use, uh, actually, it, it's not really technically beer if you don't use hops. It's, if you use this and you don't use hops, it's considered brew it. Uh, which is something else I'm studying on. But, yeah, for those folks outside the U.S., this is one of your answers to improve your methods for, for brewing if you can't order your home brewing supplies over the Internet or whatever. So, additional questions, 
If you have comments, please post them on the video. But if you have questions, please, please, please go to supersimplebrewing.com. Everybody post their questions there. You can do a search in case somebody's already asked your question. Get the answer. I check that forum at least every two or three days, and I'll answer any and everybody's questions. We also have other folks who have seen these videos and who go there regularly, and they'll answer your questions, and you guys can just feed off of each other. That's exactly what that's set up for. Okay. On that website, also, I've set it up so that our sponsor, High Gravity Brew, um, Dot com. All the, the links to the products I've selected and that I recommend you guys use for brewing, they give me a kickback for, uh, for you guys ordering through that website. Here's the caveat. You guys have to use the links on my website for me to get the kickback. This is not a... I'm not trying to get rich off of this at all. The plan here is for... Um, I have it set up so that any income I make from these videos for you guys using the links on uh, simple, uh, supersimplebrewing.com immediately gets converted to store credit for them. I use that store credit to buy things like this to make more videos for you guys. What I want to get into is uh, the more advanced stuff. I want to get the, the setup and the equipment, and I'll eventually buy it, but this will help speed up the process to be able to do all grain brewing. I want to make some videos on that. I've been studying it for a long time. I can do it. I just don't have the equipment. Um, and to get into kegging, I want to make some videos uh, for you guys on how to do kegging. That, ex that equipment can be pretty expensive. So if you guys enjoy the videos and you're going to order something online anyway, please use the links on supersimplebrewing.com to make your purchases. It doesn't, it's the same price whether you buy it through me or you buy it through the, um, the regular uh, high gravity brewing. There's no markup or anything like that. I just simply get a, a cut of the, the profits that gets converted into funds that I can use to order more equipment. Um, so yeah, please use that stuff. That's what it's there for. That's what I set it up for. The more you guys contribute to the project, the more videos I'm going to be able to do. That's what it boils down to. Um, most of my spare funds right now are devoted to either putting my wife through nursing school or building out the AR-15 project that I've, uh, I've made videos on and all that fun stuff. So, um, even if you don't buy anything online, and if you, if you have a, a mom-and-pop homebrew shop where you live, support them. Don't, use that resource. But if you don't have a place that's local for you to buy your stuff from, please consider using the sponsor for the website uh, or for this project through uh, supersimplebrewing.com. That's what it boils down to. Um, the more funds we can get for the project, the more toys we can buy for brewing, the more product reviews I can do, and the more instructional videos I can do. I really, really, really enjoy doing these videos. And now that I'm, I feel like I'm broken out of the super simple mold um, or the inmate brewing molds, we're going to start going over some pretty radical stuff that even guys who have been doing home brewing for years have never considered doing this stuff for medicinal reasons. So um, I know I ramble on a lot, but I hope you guys really dug the video. Um, please, your feedback, your ideas are very, very important. Um, share them with me. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'm happy to be back teaching you guys new tricks.